Hello everyone, today we will be talking about iPod Things, which is an IoT platform that will help you out with all of your smart projects. In order to use the platform, you will have to create an account on the iPod Things website. You have to access the website and then you click on the sign up button. Now you can fill the text areas with your username, your password, you confirm the password, you put in your full name and your email and you verify that you're not a robot. After you register, you have to check the inbox of the email you use where you're going to find a link. Click on the link to validate your account. After completing the sign up process, please log in to the website. Now let's explain what a gateway is. A gateway is a device that enables your sensors to upload and receive data from my 4 things You can build your own gateway by using a Heltec Wi-Fi LoRa32 or a TTGO OLED LoRa32. These devices can offer coverage of around 300 meters to 5 kilometers depending on your location, urban or rural. These are the components that I used in my tutorial. You can find the links where you can get these products in the video description below. To create the gateway on the website, you have to log in using the account created earlier that access the members area. On the bottom of the page, you can see the create gateway button. Click on it, then fill all the required fields such as a gateway name, a gateway location and a gateway type. Now you can see your newly created gateway under the gateway list. The next step is to upload the gateway software on your LoRa device. Click on the link provided for you on the website. But the first thing we actually have to do is to install our drivers. You click this link provided for you on the website and then you pick according to your operating system. So personally, I'm using Windows 10, so I will go and install the according software. I will open the archive and I will extract these files to a folder I chose on my computer. You can choose any folder you'd like. And then, you can see the files. So now that we actually have our files, we have to go on and actually install the drivers. Which means that if you have a 64-bit version of Windows, you choose this one, and if you have a 32-bit or 86-bit one, you choose this one. So I personally have 64-bit, so I will go on this one. You have the installation wizard, you click next, and it is already finished and ready to use. Now let's go back to the first link we clicked on GitHub, and download the according archive, which means if you use either a Heltec version, or the DGO version. I personally use Heltec, so I'll be downloading this archive. Let's extract the files to somewhere on your computer. Now that we have both our USB driver and our gateway software, we need to connect the device using a USB cable. Remember, it has a micro USB port. Next, we need to find the correct COM port on which the gateway is attached. So for that, if you're using Windows, you can go ahead and open up your device manager. And then under ports, you can see your connection. And then when you right click, you select properties. And then you can see the COM port, which is COM6. So now that we found our correct COM port, we go back to the gateway software folder. You find this file, upload.cmd, you right click and you edit this file. Right here, you need to edit with your personal COM port. So for us, we found out that it was COM6 and I'll edit this right here, but it doesn't mean it will be the same for you. Now we have to save the file and then we exit. After we've done that, Go ahead and execute upload.cmd. This is what you're going to see. After the file has finished executing, you're going to want to go back to the GitHub website and get this file right here, gateway UI. 
You open the archive and you extract these files to a folder on your computer. With your new files, you're going to want to install the configurator. We've now installed our gateway configurator. This is where I found mine. I don't know if it'll be the same as you. Then you open this folder and then you run this file. The first thing you see when you open your gateway configurator is your COM port. This is the one that we chose earlier. In the Wi-Fi section, we have SSID and PASS. SSID basically means your Wi-Fi network name, while PASS means your Wi-Fi network password. In the site section, we have Gateway ID and Gateway Key. For this, you're going to want to go back to the i 4 things website. You go to your gateway and you see the following values. From these values, you're interested in the ID and in the key. The last section is the frequency section. For this, you're going to want to choose one of these three values. These three values are the only ones supported for private gateways, so you only need to choose one. Now that we understand what these values mean, you want to go back to the main section, you click refresh, you click connect to connect your device, and then you click get configuration. You can see that I already have my values filled in. So the Wi-Fi network name, the Wi-Fi network password, gateway ID and key from the website, and one of these three values for the frequency. Now we move on to the next step. If all these values are correct, we firstly go on in the Wi-Fi section and click Send to Gateway. In the site section, we click Send to Gateway. Finally, in the frequency section, we click Send to Gateway. If we've done this process right, now when we click Get Configuration, we should have the same values that we've configured. You can restart the gateway if you want, but it is not mandatory. Remember that all these instructions are available in written format on the A4Things website. This is what the gateway looks like if it's correctly configured. What we need to do next is to add support for our board in order to be able to upload code to the LoRa 32 U4 device. First, you have to add the Adafruit board in the Arduino software. So for this, you have to open up your Arduino software, go to File, and under Preferences, you will see this section right here, Additional Boards Manager URLs. Here, you will need to copy-paste a link that you can find on the Adafruit website. You can find this link here. Just copy the link, you go back to your Arduino software, and you paste the link right here and you click OK. You can find the link I'm talking about down in the video description below. To install the actual support for our boards, we need to go back to our Arduino software under Tools, Board, Boards Manager. Here you have to type up Adafruit AVR and you want to install this package. You can install the latest version. Now we have completed the process of installing support for our boards. To check if you've done this right, go back to your Arduino software under Tools, Board, and you should see a lot of Adafruit boards here. Before you connect your board, you might need to install a driver. For this, you want to go to this link right here, which you will find in the video description below, and you want to follow this tutorial to install your drivers. The next step is to upload an example to the board. For this, go to this website right here, which will be linked in the video description below, and download all these files. You can find this button on the page to download the archive. Now you open the archive and you extract this file anywhere on your computer. Now these are the files that we've just downloaded. You want to go in the examples folder, feather, simple, thing, and you want to open up thing.ino. This is the window that you're going to see. Before we actually start uploading code to our board, we need to install the Radiohead library. To install our library, you want to go to the Arduino software under Sketch, include library, add that zip library. 
Now you want to go to the destination folder and open up the Radiohead archive. This will automatically install the library for you. The next thing we need to do is to go back to the i4Things website in the members area. Here we need to create a node, add your node name, and use the count key true. Create. Now that we've created our node, you want to go to the node list and click on the node you've just created. The first value we're interested in is the node ID, which we can see right here. In this case, it is 33. Knowing our node ID, we want to go back to the Arduino sketch. On the 31st line of code, we need to change this value to match our node ID. So in our case, it was 33. I'm going to change this value right here, and I'm going to save the sketch. The next step is to actually connect our LoRa device to the computer. For this, you want to go under Tools, under Board, and select the type of board that you have. So in our case, it is Adafruit Feather 32U4. Remember to select the right COM port. For this, under Tools, under Port, you need to select the proper port and verify that it is correct. After doing these steps, you can now upload your code. Now we need to go back to our examples folder. Open it up under feather, simple, thing. Now we can see the HTML file. You need to modify this file by opening it with either notepad or another program of your choosing. You need to scroll down in the file until you find these lines of code. The first thing we need to do is to change the first line of code in this section. In this line, we need to change this value to the value of the node ID that we found out earlier. So, in our case, it was 33, but it might not be the same for you. The next thing we need to take care of is our key. To find this value, you want to go back to the i4Things website, go back to your node, and you can see the node key right here. We need to copy this value, and we need to paste it in the place of this value. Next, we need to make sure that these values in the private key are the same as the values in our Arduino sketch, which we can see right here. Don't forget to actually save your HTML file. Now, we can go ahead and open the HTML file in our browser. Here we can see the values that the board has sent to the server. Remember that to actually see these values, you have to have your gateway connected, fully functioning, and powered on. These values that we see right here are actually generated in our Arduino sketch. To see where this happens, open up your sketch and go to the 65th line of code. These two lines of code actually generate those numbers. The first one is a random number between 0 and 30, and the second one is a random number between 50 and 90. Now we are going to be running a second example. This is the schematic that you need to follow and this is what the connection looks like in real life. Now you want to go back to your examples folder. Open it up, go to feather, go to dht22, go to thing and go to thing.ino. Now we are going to be opening up our Arduino sketch which looks like this. Instead of sending out two random values, this Arduino sketch will send out the temperature and humidity using a DHT22 sensor. In this example, we are essentially redoing what we did in the first one. So you want to go to the 33rd line and you can see this line right here. This is where the node ID goes. So for this, you want to do it exactly the same as the first time. So we go back to the i4Things website. I created another node for this. And this is the node ID. My node ID is 35. So I want to go back and change this value to 35 my node ID. After we modified our node ID, we remember from the last time that now we have to go to the HTML file and modify it. So you go back to the examples folder, 
back to the sensor folder and you change this HTML file right here. For this example, we do things exactly as the last time. So we scroll down until we see node ID and the node key. These are the values that we need to change with the node ID and the node key from our website. So we want to go back to i 4 things website and copy and paste these values on top of those values. After I've copy pasted my values, I now need to make sure that these values right here are the same as the ones in our Arduino sketch. So we open up the Arduino sketch and make sure that these values are the same as these values. If that is true, you can go ahead and save your HTML file and exit. One more thing you need to make sure of is that in this header file right here, you have the correct pin. This is the pin that the DHT temperature sensor connects to. So please make sure that this is right. Our work is mostly done now. We can go ahead and upload our code to the board. Now we can go and open our HTML file in our browser. These are the values that the board has now sent to the server. We can see the temperature of the room, which is 24 degrees Celsius and the humidity which is 49%. To see where these values are actually generated, open up your Arduino sketch and you can see on the 79th line and 80th line DHT temp get and DHT hum get. So the first message is the temperature that the sensor gets and the second one is the humidity that the sensor gets. Well done! In this tutorial, we learned a bit about our platform i4Things and as well as learning how to set up a gateway, a node, and how to run examples. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to like and share it down below and also don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching!